Good morning, everyone. Namaste. Uh, I think we are already running short of time, so I'll try to keep it um, as concise as possible. Maybe 10 minutes and I would be done. Let me try. So these two gentlemen have taken up all the time, and we need to wind up in five minutes, maybe. Um, so Fischner is a German consulting engineering firm, and uh, we've been there in the industry for more than 100 years. So in India, we've been present for 36 years. So I represent Fischner. And Fischner is nothing but water and energy. And what could have been a better platform than this to represent Fischner here? So moving on, uh, could you change the slide, please? Next one. I will not talk about Fischner at all now. Next one. Next. Next, next, next. Some data points I wanted to touch upon, uh, but I think I'll let go of this. This is already visible on the slide. Next one, please. Next one. What is the reason for all this flood? Why are we not able to uh, contain this? All of us are already aware of this. Next one. So this one is a very basic concept which I am going to talk about. Next slide. Next one, please. We have to understand that this is the situation we have to live in. Flood, drought is inevitable. So what do we do? Move on to nature-based solution. So one of the basic urban design solution that I'm going to talk about is sponge city, which Mr. Sina already briefly uh, mentioned. What is a sponge city? What is a sponge? You know, when there is a lot of spillage on the floor, we all take the sponge, soak water in it, and then release it in the basin. So that's the core idea. Now imagine a city. Next one, please. I wanted to show you through a picture. Next one. Next. OK. So just imagine a city which acts like a sponge. The entire city, whenever there is rainfall, there is flood, it just absorbs, retains, and percolates it within itself, and then releases it when required. So that is the concept of a sponge city. So what are the components of a sponge city? If there are as many number of green, blue infrastructure, if all the paved infrastructure is made porous, which can actually absorb, filter, and then slowly the water is released into drainage system, river, or wherever required. It can be even treated and used as a, um, for drinking water. So where did this idea come from? This idea came from China, of course. Dr. Professor Yu, who is a, who is a planner and uh, an ecologist, and he came up with this idea in 2013 when China, especially North China, was going through a lot of flooding. So he said, hey, let's come up with this idea where the entire city can absorb. Let's change the material, the paving material. Let's have as much of green and blue infrastructure. And Chinese government, kudos to them that in 2014, they actually approved this policy. It came under urban policy, and they took up 30 numbers of pilot projects to convert spaces, some of the cities, into sponge city. So what are the components of a sponge city? Next slide, please. You see, what did they do? What is it that they did differently? They created rain gardens, permeable pavements, rainwater recovery system, harvesting system, Green roof, imagine every building had green roof, which actually absorbed and harvested rainwater. Bioretention. They saved purified water. And that was the basic concept on which 16 cities actually have been trying as a model, and they have been successful. I do not say, I do not claim that it is 100% successful and all your water problems would be cured. but. Even if they do it 50%, 60%, or let's say 
hey, we are doing good. If you go by World Economic Forum report, it's found that this is 50% more cost effective than any other engineered solution. And 28% adds more value than gray infrastructure. Next one. Like I already mentioned, China has taken up 16 pilot cities and allocated to each of them between 400 to 600 yuan, which is about 55 million euros. And they are working on it. So you see pictures before and after how Spun City is created. Next one. Another case study is Juhai. Juhai is, you see the location of Juhai. It's a touristy city, also known as a forest city. Was it always like this? No. But today, it has about 708 urban parks. It is, the entire infrastructure is blue and green. There are a lot of water bodies, green areas. Ecosystem is restored. People are wanting to be there. And it hasn't been detrimental to socioeconomic development. So Juhai is a big example of this. And how did this happen? It was a brownfield development. Because government put impetus on this urban policy, made it mandatory for uh, the urbanist to work on this policy. Next one, please. So you see, Juhai has about, um, it boasts of brick, concrete pavement, porous asphalt roads, which is possible, green roofs, green verges, bioretention basins, and 115 square kilometer of concept, uh, sorry, Spun City concept infrastructure development. That in itself is a big number, which is actually one fourth of, uh, one quarter of, uh, same thing, the entire urban development. What are we doing here? India, closer home, Chennai, is going to be, probably is going to be the first spun city. Because two departments in Chennai, next slide please. Next slide. Yes, so two departments, yeah. Chennai Metropolitan Development Authority and Water Resource Department. They have started mulling over this concept. They are planning to have this um, digging recharge shafts Water Resource Department is planning to have. So probably this is going to work. So these recharge shafts would be, let's say about 80, 90 feet deep where water could be stored and reused later, treated and reused. MRDA. Chennai Metro Development Authority is also planning to have sponge parks because it's not easy to do, uh, to apply this concept in the entire city maybe. So they're trying to have small, smaller, smaller sponge parks across the city. So if Chennai, Kochi, Mumbai can think of this concept, why can't we? So high time, next slide please. With this, I would like to close my, um, talk with a pledge and leaving you all with a thought. Um, so you, we've talked enough. Uh, ye karna chahiye, wo karna chahiye. Now is the action time. If we don't wake up now, not just wake up, tie up our shoes and not work cohesively on this department. All the departments need to combine and work on a mission mode. Only then this is possible. The water problem will be sorted. So I am taking a pledge as a, to be a water warrior, and I'm sure you two are. Thank you.